Hey guys, all right, I am back today with a tutorial for you. I got the Ocelot. I don't know if you've seen it on the internet yet, but it's a modular synth made for Max for Live, and then uh, it goes right into your right into Ableton, which is awesome. It was like a hundred dollars. Pretty, it was worth it. I'm really happy with the purchase. I I've, I've been wanting to get into modular synthesis, but probably like most people. It's really, really expensive and just pretty much out of my price range. So this was cool. I was like a little apprehensive, but then I got it. At first I was like, eh. But then as I started playing with it more, I started getting a lot more interesting sounds. I definitely like use some effects outside of it to get kind of m more where I want it. But I wanted to show you how I made this patch. Um, I have I pulled these three sounds from a song that I'm working on. Um, this is what I'm going to show you, though. Um, let's see. This is what the patch looks like. And this is all like the three sounds together just to get an idea of like where it's at in the piece. Save some CPU, turn these off. I'm not going to be using these for a while at all, probably again. And also, this doesn't really shut off, um, so it can be kind of annoying sometimes. But, uh, all right. So, I'm going to take all the effects off. One of the, the thing, though, about this sound is that the guitar rig is really what kind of gives it that final, interesting sound. So, without that, it might be kind of difficult. So if I play it and then take that off. So again, though, yeah, that's right. Um, again, I just wanted to go over kind of this synth and then show you what I've been doing. Uh, at first, it's pretty difficult. I found it challenging, even though I can get around the synthesizer. Um, it definitely changes the way you think and approach things. And it's been really cool. And I highly recommend this if you want to kind of try to push yourself and think differently with the way you design sound. Um, so if you have this, awesome. This might be fun for you to watch. If you don't, you just kind of are interested in it. You can kind of see what's going on here and uh, we can go from there so basically I, I can't even remember i can't even tell at this point <laughs> to be honest i should have looked into this before but the midi to cv gate is basically generally like i am kind of taking more of a dead mouse approach with this kind of stuff because like a lot of times he just will put lfos on his oscillators and then make the pitches bend kind of crazy so that's kind of what i have going on here i think once you put that on there the midi to cv gate doesn't actually take precedence anymore um which probably makes no sense if you've never even touched this thing so i'm just going to go ahead and show you what i'm doing from the rest of the other the other parts uh so basically what we did here is just to start if you wanted to use this the, the simplest patch you basically need audio in so if you were bringing in audio and using this you can also use this as an effects unit you bring audio in and then audio out and you would connect them you always and then you put your signal in you put your signal in etc cetera, etc cetera. but we are not doing it we already have our audio coming out of our sound so here's my audio out at the bottom here um, so basically my signal is starting with my oscillators so I have I have three oscillator A's that you can choose from up here so we have oscillator A. you also have like different types add 12 add 40 um, I actually haven't played with these ones yet there's FM modulation ones there's noise uh, oscillators etc there's like a morphing one which is kind of like a wavetable basically like a massive um, with three different I think it's like a square saw and a sign uh, so basically what's going on here is I have my first oscillator which I have pitched down 48 semitones I have a little bit of detuning on it I have this to a square so I did some pulse with to like change the, the kind of the sound a bit as it goes and some pulse with modulation 
Um, those are kind of lengthy topics. I'm not going to get into it, but basically it's a square wave. We'll leave it at that. Um, I have, there's another option on, there's a couple options. Like there's two saws, a square, tr uh, triangle saw, and a sine wave. So on this one, I have two saws, and then there comes up like with a, I'm not sure what that is. For, I guess it just fattens up the saw. So I turn that up. Um, and then the last one is just a regular saw wave. This one's pitched down negative 36 semitones. This one's pitched uh, to negative 36 semitones as well. So now from there, I guess I'll just take this directly. I'll have to cut, I'll cut this off for a sec. Ooh, what am I doing? I'm not, oh my God, I'm disconnecting shit. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Okay, plug that back in. All right, so yeah, if you click on those areas, it'll, uh, like right where that is, it'll undo the, the wire. So I'm gonna cut the signal from here and go straight to the audio out so you can get an idea what's going on. It might be really loud, so I apologize. Okay, this is, might be really loud actually. All right, I have all this other stuff on it still though. Let's do this. Turn all these off. So, this is essentially what's going on here. So, you can hear what's going on. Um, they're just pitch bending. I have an LFO that goes from the signal out and I go into the CV control voltage gate. There's like, there's one, two, three CV gates that you can have on here. CV1 is automatically turned all the way up. Um, but then when you look over on these other ones, there's CV2 and CV3. So you actually, those set are at zero. So if you don't turn them up, they have no effect. So essentially what's going on here is the signal's coming out of here. I set up my LFO to modulate at this, basically what that wave looks like. Um, it's quarter notes, and then I send it to the CV gate. So what's it's doing? Ah, damn it! Did it again. So what's that doing then is just modulating the pitch right here for each one of these, and then from there I'm taking the output of each oscillator. So you can kind of see it there. Output, output, output. There's a way to hide the wires, but I, I haven't actually looked up how, so I'm not going to do it right now. This might take forever. But so then I have a mixer. So there's different type. There's a three band. There's like a three channel. There's an eight channel. I haven't looked into the other ones too much yet, but I just use the three. So basically, I can mix these three sounds together, and these are really just gain controls. So I have my first oscillator coming into this one, second oscillator into that one, third oscillator into that one, and then what you're hearing now is it's coming out of our audio out. But what I'm actually doing is putting it into a wave shaper now after, but I have to rewire it back in. So. Signal goes out. Now the signal's in the wave shaper, which is then it's running back through all this other stuff. And because this is all hooked up already, it's coming. Out. So, all right, all right. actually, it's come from the wave shaper now. So I gotta unhook it from the filter bank. So instead of going to the filter bank, we're gonna go straight to our output again, so you can hear what's going on. So the wave shaper just gives a little more grit. Not a whole lot. I, so you can hear again what's going on. I'm um, just getting some character in the sound. Now, the effects and stuff in here, like I haven't layered them enough to get any super crazy stuff. Uh, I don't know. I haven't had it long enough, but I'm sure with like a lot of creativity, if you really start layering stuff, and maybe if you start running wave shapers into mixers, and I don't know, it, it it's this is a bottomless pit basically. So if you're not getting what you want just keep playing with stuff um, so basically like I said this this wave shaper then goes into this filter bank I really did nothing with this because I haven't quite figured this thing out yet um, so I can't even really explain to you what I did I don't even think I adjusted any of these except I changed the mode which gave it a different tonality and I turned up the resonance on it and I pushed the vintage button and I kind of liked how it sounded so that's kind of it for that I wish I could explain more I guess we can cut it from going to the grain delay so you can kind of get an idea from what it sounds like to from that spot to that spot so
That's the wave shaper to straight out to audio. But now we're gonna go from the wave shaper into our filter bank here, which is a uh, it's right effects filter bank, and that is your option right there. So you bring your signal out to the left channel. So you can hear it's different. So it gives it a different character. And then after that, I took it into grain delay, which if you have Ableton Live, you should be very familiar with. It's just the same exact grain delay in Ableton Live, except now it's inside here and a little bit different. So I just open it up and then started playing with stuff till I got something interesting. I don't want to screw up this line. So let me figure out where everything's going to. Okay, so went from that to the grain delay. So we're going to go skip going out of the Oh, I only went out. Oh, that's right. You can only go out on the left one side and that. Okay, so this is basically what sounds like going in the grain delay now. So basically after that, then I took it and put it into this pitch shifter. And I also did used an LFO again. I chose for my modulators. And I picked LFO A. I'm not sure what the difference is between LFO A and B. I think... I'm pretty sure it's a simpler version of LFO A because I know oscillator A and B, B is a simpler version than A. So it's probably just a few extra settings that aren't there just to save CPU because this thing can get really CPU intensive, if you, like very in CPU intensive. Um, okay, so what was I saying? Okay, so we went into this pitch shifter and I put the signal out of this LFO into the control voltage and I did it again. <laughs> here um and then the c the control voltage like the effect that it's going to have on this the shifting of this with the semitones it will be set default by zero so you're going to have to turn that up and then this glide kind of gets some interesting effects so i turned that up a little bit and i pushed it onto float which i do not know the exact definition of what the difference is between float and not or and then the other one's standard and i think the other this is float so i, I do not know the technical reasons or what the difference is so but uh just so we can hear What's going on once we come out of the pitch shifter now? Maybe let's do this one more time just to regroup because I talked for a while. So this is coming out of grain delay. So now we're going to go into our pitch shifter and then we're going to come out back out our audio out again. So that has a pretty big change in the sound. Come on. So that's from there, and then lastly, I just went into my chorus, and I put that on, I adjusted the settings a little bit, and I took my left out, put it into my output, put it into my output, and that is really it for that sound. Now again, we'll add the rest of the stuff back on, so I'll put some e got some EQ on there, took out the low end, took some of the top off. I had the utility on there earlier because I did get rid of the stereo imaging, like the stereo width, and got rid of the sides and monoed it just to hear if I could fit it somewhere else in a mix with when it was actually in the other part of the song, but I didn't use it. I guess EQ'd more out just because I needed it. Let's see. And then guitar rig. This is where it gets cool. I think what I used was effects. So if you have this, you can look it up. Effects. Handbrake Blues, where's that at? I think it's guitar. Nope. Nope. Mix, nope. Nope. Okay. I don't know where it is. Oh, I think I started though. So not that that's gonna help. It's just gonna be a different list. Basically, all right, the preset is Handbrake Blues. Didn't even touch anything after that other than putting this Romano to stereo. Uh, that's really it for that. And that really gives it a nice, like, really cool, really cool character. Like, I, this, I love this sound. Um, put some more filtering on it with the resonance. I kind of like the sound of the auto filter over using EQ8. It has a little more grit, I guess. Um, then... 
I put some simple delay on top. Compression to kind of, you know, keep the sound under control because, you know, some of the sounds get some of the spikes in it and you want to keep it kind of level, especially for mixing purposes. Otherwise, it's going to pop too far out of your mix. Um, and then again, simple delay and things like that, and especially the guitar rig, are going to add low end back into your sound. So I had to go back and EQ out the low end again. And then lastly, I just have my, my uh, sidechain compression on there. And we can turn that back on, put this on, put our bass back on. it for this tutorial um again ocelot's really cool if you have 100 bucks and you want to start getting into this it's pretty addictive i can see why i've been on forums on reddit talking to people about wanting to get into doing modular synthesis and people are like yeah uh you better have money because it's expensive and it's extremely addictive i mean i'm sure everyone's seen dead mouse's studio and yeah it so it's pretty cool um i hope this helped maybe helped you want to maybe pick this up or not want to pick it up not really sure but uh, again I hope you enjoyed if you have any questions about the ocelot um, like I said I've only had it for like a week and a half or so but I could definitely try to answer some questions if you need them so again hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time